Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone out this morning. We uh, please bear with me. I got a few announcements to make for everybody that missed yesterday. Well, y'all missed a good time over Six Flags. Uh, a lot of walking though, and uh, for once I left Six Flags without without a headache. So uh, from riding those rough rides. Uh, so, but. Uh, uh, today, or the upcoming events, uh, July 8th, uh, we'll have Youth Sunday. We'll also have our fellowship lunch. Also, don't forget, we'll have no children's church today. Uh, also, on the 15th, uh, will be our uh, singing night with the Cross Ties Band. They will be here. And then that Monday, we'll, we'll have our Young at Heart lunch. Uh, please see Miss LaVonda if you have any questions. Also, uh, next month or next week as a matter of fact next weekend or the weekend after will be uh fourth of july so remember that also at the end uh the first week in august the sixth of the tenth of the second week in august i'm sorry will be our revival our evangelist will be otis garman and also don't forget tonight we have a baptism uh brother luke will be our uh be the one getting baptized he'll also uh uh, so he's really looking forward to it. Uh, so we all are. Praise the Lord. And uh, I pray that uh, that this year we've we've had two baptisms this year, and I pray that we have a whole lot more. Uh, at this time, do we have any more announcements? Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Yeah, we got one. say this uh, y'all remember brother ted walker in your prayers he was our bus driver yesterday he did an outstanding job getting us over there and back home and uh, hopefully lord willing next year uh, uh, there might be another trip plan we're going to request him but uh, remember all them guys that drive the buses they do have a big responsibility uh, at this time i ask everybody if they would please stand uh, we'll take up this morning's offering if i can have three men to come forward This time I ask Brother Teddy where you ask the blessing.
of them hanging in there. That's the call. Okay. That's what you get when you got good sunlight. Prayer request time. says I'm on. Hmm. Uh, Brother Paul, if you'll help me out, I can't remember the man's name. Jeff Taylor. Jeff Taylor is in a terrible shape this morning. His family wanted us to anoint a prayer cloth and come and pray for Jeff Taylor and pray over this, this cloth. So all of you who believe in that, if you'll come this way, we're going to anoint this cloth. You remember when we had that revival in the old church when they, I think about 26, 28 saved, he sat right over there in the old church and he jumped the bench to get to the altar. Amen. Oh. Let us pray. Our kind Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your, your love. Thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the people who believe the Heavenly Father. We believe the Heavenly Father that prayer makes a difference. God, we know, Lord, that you hear our prayers. And we know, the Heavenly Father, that you can do all things. We pray, Lord, that you help Brother Taylor. Touch his body if it be thy will. Help his family to believe the Heavenly Father. We know, Lord, that you do things for purposes. We we might not understand it, but we know you have a purpose. Help us to hunt your purpose. But most of all, the Heavenly Father, give us faith to pray, believing that if we come to you and believe and join ourselves together, our prayers make a difference. We believe that this day, the Heavenly Father. We believe that from the bottom of our hearts. Help us, the Heavenly Father, is our prayer. Bless this man. Touch him if it be thy will. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your goodness. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to thank everyone who has prayed for my husband's birthday. Amen. Amen. Prayer, prayer answer. We'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out this morning. We are going to have an uh, altar of prayer. I have an aunt, my Aunt Clara Ruth, in her 80s. She's not doing real good, and she's been under hospice care now for a while. But she's the last one of the Canes on my daddy's family. So let's pray that the Lord gives her peace. And that she can go on home to be with him. And we know that heaven can be our homes if we'll trust God and, and search. So pray for my Aunt Claire Ruth that God takes her and that there's peace and no pain in her life. Anyone have a special spoken request this morning? Let's remember Miss Calvert. She was she was here at our last job meet. I got to meet her. That's good. Read it.
Let's remember that family. Go ahead. Yeah, let's, let's, let's pray God that gives Carla lots of strength. She kind of looks over every one of them. Go ahead and bless Let's remember Brother Gary. Go ahead. You know where? Colin. Okay. You want to? Let's remember that. The Hall's brother. You want to? Go ahead. Yeah. You know what? Uh, this life will have troubles and trial, tribulations. But we serve a big, big God. Amen. He knows our troubles and our trials. And He told us to bring Him to Him. Woo! Amen. He says, Bring Him to me. My yoke is easy, my burden's light. Amen. So if you believe in this God, Bring your cares and your burdens. And let's go to the Lord and pray.
Okay, ladies.
they've only had two practices for this. One of those practices was this morning. Um, we've been a busy group of young folks, but um, we still want to praise the Lord. We want to give Him honor and worship Him. And we studied a little bit this morning about Psalms 145. And part of that says, each generation witnesses to the next. And I told them they have a responsibility of witnessing to those younger than them and people of my generation and people older. And I told them they have an, in, an eternal impact on the kingdom of God. And so um, we take it seriously, but we have a good time when we do it as well. So um, Miss Carol Moore is, uh, this is one of her favorite songs. And I really wanted to do this song today for her. I know and hope that she'll watch this on YouTube, but this is for this is for Miss Carol. We love you, Carol.
I got it on. They can make it well with your soul. Amen. His name is Christ Jesus. And He loves us. You ever had things happen in your life and you didn't know why? All of us, right? We're going to talk about some of those, but we're also going to talk about this God of miracles. Whew. My God's a God of miracles, Gary. I hope yours is. Amen? He loves us. You believe that? And He wants us to listen to Him and obey Him. <laughs> How many of us has got all we need to eat? Good dry place to sleep? Heating and air conditioning? <laughs> Soft pillows? Nice bed? All have comforts, don't we? Where do you think those come from? Huh? Just because you worked and bought them? Who gave you the strength to work? Hmm? Who gave you an opportunity to have that job? <laughs> God of miracles. In the time we live, we're blessed with so much. And we have so many comforts. It's hard for us to these things are blessings of God. Now, have you ever thought about that? We complain a lot when things don't go our way. And I am say the preacher ain't no different. You know what I'm saying? But God has blessed us in our life. And you know something else? It ain't just one. He continues to bless us in our lives. It's an ongoing thing. Amen. God of miracles. We understand more about everything in today's world. What to do to make us live longer. We have more knowledge of arts and sciences. So our work is less wear and tear on our bodies. So with a higher standard of life, more personal time for ourselves and our families, it is harder to see that the blessings of a that it is the blessings of a merciful God. It is. The things that we have in our life are from blessings of God. Now I realize that you have to work to make money to live. But it's the blessing of God who gave you the knowledge, the strength, the opportunity, the job that you have in your life. Amen? This is a God of mercy. He loves us. Amen? And there's things that happen to us in our life and sometimes we don't understand them. And we question, don't we? We do. So when we have health problems, we go to a doctor for help. We don't think about who gave the doctor knowledge to help us. But believe it or not, it's God's work through another person. Amen? You ever thought about that? God can help us through other people. Now, you say, <laughs> God can help me help somebody? Sure he can. God can help each and every one of you help somebody. Amen? Now, we love our brothers and sisters and our families. And we kind of look after them. But God also considers the world His family. Amen. We're supposed to care about them people too. Amen. I'm often blessed by Carla. She's so willing to help the church. 
the people outside the church. I can remember when we had the big tornado. I don't know anybody that worked harder or longer than Carl. And she hadn't quit. She loves her family. She loves God. Amen? And her work to the people is great. We ought to find that love in our hearts. Amen? Woo! Amen? We're serving a God of mercy. And He wants us to share our mercies with the people of this world. Amen? Our mercy comes from God. Amen? But you might be part of God with your mercy. Amen. Don't you love Him? Sure you do. So when we have a problem in our life, we have to go to the doctor. <laughs> Let's pray to God that He knows God. But even if he don't, God uses him to help you. Amen. <laughs> now that I have your attention, I want you to think of the number of times God has used a miracle in your life to help you. I want you to think as I play you this song. The mercies of God. How he shares his mercy with us.
Did you think of any miracles in your life? Or did you just take for granted some of the times that you had close calls in your life? Those were just things that happened. You ever had a miracle in your life? It could be. Just a major surgery. It could be a near miss in your car. It could be a storm in your life. A near miss accident at work. It could be the miracle of a son, a daughter, a grandson, a granddaughter. These are all and could be miracles from God. Amen? Do you believe in a God that can do miracles? Amen? I believe in a God that can do miracles, don't you? Just the miracle of saving my soul. It's unbelievable in my heart, even today. In my life, whoo! That I trusted God enough that He let the miracle of His Son save my soul. Amen. Huh. You can have that miracle today in your life. You can have a God that can do miracles. Amen. If it, haven't, if it hasn't happened in your life today, today would be a real good time to let it happen. Amen. Why don't you let it happen in your life today? Let us see that miracle happen here at Hunter's Chapel. I believe in miracles. Don't you? You know what? <laughs> Our God's been doing miracles for a long time, John. For a long, long time. Look back at his first miracle. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Miracle. Spoken into existence, John. Miracle of God. He's been around since the beginning of time with his miracles. He wants you to love him and to believe in him. Brother Joe. So he can share his miracles, plural. Hear me? Plural. <laughs> In your life. I've seen them. You've seen them. God continues to do them. Amen? <laughs> and he loves his children. The miracles of God... I've been around, like I said, for a long time. <laughs> but we're not going to go over all of them. We know that you can remember God talking to Moses in the desert, appeared to him in a burning bush, a bush that didn't burn up. And he told him to go free his people in Egypt. Lord, I can't, I can't talk. He, he handled everything, didn't he? And he caused the plagues and things. But we're going to go on a little past that. We're going to start in Deuteronomy with one of Moses' leaders. And he was telling them there, Joshua, this. In Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, 21st verse. He is thy praise, and he is thy God, and hath done for thee great and terrible things, which thine eyes have seen. Amen? Now here's Joshua telling the children of Israel what they've seen in their journeys in the wilderness. Amen? And some of them, even from the time of Egypt. Amen? From the plagues to even crossing the Red Sea. God did miracles, Brother Gary. Don't you want God to do a miracle in your life? Now let's talk about Job. You say, well, Job lost everything. He did. <laughs> but 
But Job didn't lose his faith in his God who can do miracles. <laughs> Amen. And God restored him seven times. But in the fifth chapter of the book of Job, it reads with the seventh verse we're going to start. It says, Yet man is born into trouble as his sparks fly upward. I was seeking to God, and unto God would I commit my cause, which doeth great things, unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Amen. His God, he believed in, brother Johnny. He believed he could do wonderful things, amen, and miracles, and he did. Amen. Has God let you know in your life this day that he can do a miracle in you? Have you felt this God close in your heart? Could you not feel his power in the prayer a while ago? Could you not feel the power when they were doing their drama this morning of God's spirit in your life? It's a miracle itself. Amen. God's spirit is a miracle from God. He sent back. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I'll send you a comforter. And that comforter is the spirit of God. Amen. And through that spirit, he does miracles. Amen. In Jeremiah, the 32nd chapter, in the 26th verse and 27th verse, then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Well, amen. <laughs> amen. He's the God of everything. Amen. There's nothing too hard for him. Amen. <laughs> so if you believe in this God of miracles, there's not anything that he can't do. Amen. Do you believe in miracles? Do you believe God has a miracle in His in your life? He does. He has a miracle for us when we believe. Now we're going to get over to the New Testament. We're going to get where Christ is. And then we're going to go some after Christ is crucified. But He continues even... Now that he's gone to do miracles in their, our lives, in our times. Matthew, the 19th chapter, and the 26th verse. Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. Now, do you believe that? With some things men can't do. Amen. Matter of fact, there's a lot of them. <laughs> But nothing is impossible with God. Do you believe that? If you believe that, then you can have a miracle in your life. Because when you pray to God, believing things happen. Amen? When we as a group as a, of, of church members join together and combine our love and our strength as one, we can agree upon things and things can change, Brother Teddy. Amen. They don't have to stay the thing. When we have the faith to join ourselves together, pray, believe it, then God comes on the thing. He has power. Amen. Sometimes we're weak. But God can share that power with us. And He will. And He wants us to have that power in our lives. Amen. The 21st chapter and the 21st verse. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, listen to me now, if you have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do that which is done to the fig tree, but also ye can say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. Amen. So if we have faith in God, all things are possible, right? Do you have faith in God? Do you have enough faith that you can do the things that He wants you to do? 
need to have it. Now, in John, the 11th chapter, if you want to go there, we're going to talk to you about Jesus' friend who died. He does the miracle, doesn't he? He does the miracle in a lot of ways. He raises Lazarus from the dead. But he does it to teach us. Amen? And we're not going to read the whole chapter. We're going to read part of it, though. And if you'll turn to the 11th chapter of John, with the 4th verse. No, we'll, we'll start with the 3rd. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, Christ knew what was happening, didn't he? Not only did he know Lazarus was going to die, but it wasn't unto death. I mean, he died, but he wasn't going to stay dead, was he? But it was done for the purpose of the glory of God. Amen? And Christ knew this. So that's why he said that. So this is happening, and, and his friend Lazarus is sick. And they send to him and say, Lord, your friend that you love is sick. Won't you come? <clears throat> if you go down to the 12th verse. Then said his disciple, Lord, if he sleepeth, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, uh-huh. How? Plainly, directly, so they would understand. Nothing hidden, right? Plainly. Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe, nevertheless, let's go unto them. Amen? Amen. Then Thomas, then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his followers, let's also go that we may die with him. Now, the, the scribes and the Pharisees been after the good Lord a lot, so he left to get away out of their sight. Thomas thought that if they go back, that they would kill him. So he said, let's go with the Lord. If he's going to die, we're going to die with him. Amen? Now that's faith, isn't it? But we know that dwindled a little bit, don't we, from Thomas. Because we, we heard of him as being doubting Thomas. But Thomas had strength at times, didn't he? <laughs> he had a lot of strength before he died, amen? So God is setting this up. Start with the 23rd. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. Woo! Amen. A lot of power right here, Brother Gary. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this. Woo! Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're serving a God who has all power and has strength over a death. Amen. This God can do miracles in your life today if you believe in him. Amen. He's fixing to do a miracle. Amen. So the world can see how much strength he had. And it's getting set up as we speak. Amen. God has power in his life. Here on this earth. He left us power through his spirit. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Can 
kind of got happy there and moved the page. <laughs> God has all power. And He can do miracles. Amen? And He's a miracle doing God. He's been doing them since the beginning of this Bible. He's doing them today. If you skip over to the 39th verse, we're going to get down to it. They led Jesus to the graveyard, the sepulcher where Lazarus was. And Jesus says, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Amen. What have we got to do to see God's glory? We've got to believe. Do we believe? Do you believe? Do you really believe? Then if you really believe, you can pray a prayer of faith. Amen. It gets through to God and he comes on the scene. Amen. You've got to believe in Christ Jesus from the bottom of your heart. And things can happen. And they will if you believe. Then they looked, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was lain. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee, thou hast heard me. Amen. Whoo! Amen. I thank you right now, God, for hearing me. Amen. Because I'm fixing to do a miracle. I thank God that you heard me and helping me. Amen. I'm human here on this earth, but I'm your son. I thank you for hearing me. We are God's son if we're Christians. Amen. We have power with God. If you will listen and believe, have faith in God. Amen. Who? This God I know is alive and well. And he's with his believing children. Who? And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it. <laughs> hey Amen. I know you heard me all the time, God. I'm just saying it so these stiff necked, hard hearted people can hear and know that you love them. Amen. Woo! <laughs> I'm glad one day that I accepted that I was hard hearted and stubborn and turned myself toward God and believed. Amen. Woo! <laughs> A miracle from God. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it. That they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and he that... <laughs> That was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound round about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loosen him and let him go. Amen! He had done a miracle for the whole world to see so they could believe that he was God's son and he had power in this world over death. Uh -huh. And he did. And he does today. Amen reason why we don't have power with God is our faith is weak. <laughs> we need to believe more. We need to search Him out in our lives. We need to be obedient, Brother Bob, when He tells us to do something. <laughs> uh -huh. Amen. Come on. Obedience. <laughs> what did Samuel tell kings? Oh, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. We need to be obedient to God. This Christ, this spirit that he left us can lead and guide us where we can get to heaven and make it our home. Amen. And if we have God's goodness in us, 
it's going to show. And we're going to love people, Brother Gary. We're going to help people. We're going to pray for people. We're going to have faith that God can change things, Brother Don. Amen? I believe God can change things if we'll let Him. Amen? Sometimes we're our own worst enemy. We don't believe enough. We don't have faith enough. God of miracles. How many of us have been driving down the road and have a real close call and say, Whew, boy, I got lucky. Huh? You ever thought about that guardian angel God sends with you sometimes? Huh? Reminds me of his joke about this drunk. Preacher, <laughs> seen this drunk, and he was all over the road, and the preacher stopped him. Well, he run the preacher out of the road, and the drunk stopped to help the preacher's way it went. <laughs> and uh, so the drunk got out and said, Well, you okay, preacher? He said, Well, yes. He says, I had the good Lord riding with me. He says, You better put him out and let him ride me. You're going to kill him. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Is God riding with you? If you don't think He is, you might better put Him out and let Him ride with me. Amen? I want Him with me when I go. Amen? Amen. Now, do you have enough faith to believe this God can do miracles? <laughs> I do. I have enough faith to believe <laughs> I want Him in my heart and life. I'm going to tell you about a woman we're going to read about her who spent all that she had. She's seen every physician, every doctor that she could see. But nobody could heal her. Uh-huh. Yeah. <coughs> but she had faith to believe that some way that she was going to see Christ. And if she could just get to where He was and touch the hem of His garment, she could be healed. Another miracle. I want to read this because it was done in a crowd. A press of people. But yet she had faith. If I can just touch the hem of his garment. Luke, the 8th chapter. 43rd verse. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living... Upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. Came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. <laughs> so she had purposed in her heart that she needed to see Christ. And she'd also purpose if I can just get to where he is and touch the hem of his garment, he can heal me. What kind of faith is that? If I can just get to where Christ is, if I can just reach out and touch Him, I can be healed. So she purposed that in her life. Do we purpose to reach out and touch God in our life? Do we purpose that we need Him more than anything else? We should. Amen. He is the healer, isn't He? He is the miracle doer. Amen. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throngs thee and presses thee and sayest thou, Who touched me? How can we know, Lord? There's so many people here. How are we supposed to know who touched you? But he knew he was touched because he could feel the virtue come out of him. Amen. He knew someone had faith to believe in something because his virtue, his strength, his spirit, his power was gone out because of that one purpose. Amen. <laughs> and Jesus said, somebody has touched me for I perceive the virtue has gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling. And falling down before him, she declared unto him, before all the people who, for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. Amen. And he said unto her daughter, be of good comfort. 
Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Amen. What had made her whole? Her belief in God. Amen. Her strength, her faith. Amen. Had made her whole. Amen. Do you have enough faith to make you whole? Let's hope so. Amen. But, but this ain't a hope so salvation, is it? This is a no so. You can know if God is in your heart and your life. Amen. And you need to know this God of miracles. Carla, this God of miracles wants to be your Savior. He wants you to call upon Him in times of need. He wants you to love Him. Amen. He needs you to reach out so that He can answer your prayers. Amen? You have to make the step. This lady who had the issue of blood had to do something. Amen? She had to step out. She believed in her faith that if she could get to where Christ was, she could be saved. Amen? Let me tell you something. If you can get to where Christ is, you can be saved. Amen? Amen? Come on. When you get willing and humble to get to where Christ is, you're humble enough so He can come into your heart and your life. He told you, if you would come to me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, what? He's going to come in. Amen? Then He can work in your life. Then, Brother John, we get to where He wants us. Amen? God of miracles, Brother Weldon. I serve a God of, will, of miracles, Bill. I love him this day. Brother Roger, he loves us. He can do miracles. Amen. Do you believe in this God? <laughs> Isn't it wonderful when he comes with our children and blesses them so it can roll over on us? Can you feel God's spirit pour out? Huh? And it don't have to stay with him, does it? Huh? It can bubble out in your heart. It does mine. I can feel God in my life, people. You need to feel Him close. He is close as you'll let Him be. He's a God of miracles. Amen? Do you believe in this God? A God of miracles. Christ was crucified. And before he went back, he said he'd send us a comforter through his spirit. He also told them, his disciples, that better works that they could, could do because he had to go to the Father. And they were going to be here on this earth. But he was going to be with them in spirit and in truth. He was going to send them that spirit back, that comforter. Amen. Now we're going to talk to you about Paul. Just a little bit. In Acts. And we're going to start <coughs> around the 10th verse. Y'all remember before we started, we anointed a cloth with oil for the sick. I can read you where it started. Right here. The people who believe through Paul. Amen. We know that Paul was a chosen vessel of God, right? God struck him down on the road to Damascus. But yet he was still human when he been he. He still had problems. But he also didn't have any problem whatsoever in serving God, did he? He was punished. He was beaten. He was imprisoned. But yet he still loved God and he didn't quit, did he? In Acts, the 10th verse of the 19th chapter... And this continued by the space of two years so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Now listen to me what strength and what power Paul had with God because of his faith. So that from his body were they brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the disease parted from them and evil spirits went out of them just because of something from Paul. Amen. 
that is strength and that is power. They would anoint cloths and send to the sick and they'd be healed. Or the devils would leave out of me, man. So see what faith can do. How many had faith while ago when they come up? Amen. God can work miracles if we believe. Amen. God's a God of miracles and he wants us partaking in the things of God so that he can spread his miracles throughout this lost and dying world through our works. Amen. We can help God in our life if we'll do the things that he wants and he can perform miracles in our lives through God, through his spirit. Amen. And our faith can help other people. Amen. Did Paul's faith help other people? Amen. It did. Do you think there's people watching you? <laughs> Let me tell you, if you don't believe so, you had your head under a rock somewhere. Amen. <laughs> they are. Amen. Especially if you're a Christian. Because they want this, they want to see you stumble. Amen. <laughs> So from his body were there brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Amen. Because of his faith. Amen. Do you have faith? You need to. You need to have faith. We... as God's people have power we do we don't use it much whose fault's that <laughs> glad to hear that it's our fault isn't it when we don't have power with God in Ephesians the third chapter and then I'm going to close if you give us a song be getting it ready Paul again. 19th verse. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all fullness of God, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us what power is that? Who's it work in? When he said us, did he mean the church? He did, amen? We have power with God, people. Let's claim it. Let's have that power and work for God, amen? We have power with God if we'll take it. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. All ages. Does that include us? Amen. We can have power today just like they had. This God's the same as he was back in. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. This God's alive and He wants you to believe Him and trust Him. Amen. He does miracles. Amen. A God of miracles. Amen. He can do a miracle today. He can change you from a life of sin to the life of Christ if you'll but let Him. Amen. <laughs> Are you ready to make some changes in your life? <laughs> Just let God get in there. Amen. <laughs> yeah. You ready for some change? Let Christ in your life. Amen. <laughs> he can do miracles, Carla. I've seen them. He can do miracles. Can we stand? Do you know this God of miracles? He wants you to know Him. He wants you to know Him. Open up your heart and let Him in. Because He wants you to, to come to Him. He wants to dwell in your heart. If you'll but let Him. Amen. You have a job to do. Let Him in. 
let him in. Come out of sadness from wherever you have been. Come broken heart, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come near. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow. said, bring me your burden. Come to me. Oh, Lord, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too far. So lay down your hurt. There's hope for the hopeless, and all those who strayed, come sit at the table, come taste the grace, there's rest for the weary, a rest that endures, earth has no sorrow, heaven can't cure. Still, earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. This week, as you're going through your routines, remember that God loves you. And He's a God of miracles. And He wants you to call upon Him. Do you have any announcements? Yeah, y'all come out. We're going to have a baptism tonight. We, uh, we got the water fixed. It ain't going to be cold. Amen. Unless somebody plays a joke on us. Anything else?
I thank you for your kind attention. I know that God loves you. I know 